In this video, we're going to cover one of the most misused and maybe misunderstood part of QuickBooks, and that is service items. Service items for a landscape company are probably really different than you might set them up for a retail company. So that's why we're going to cover this in a little bit more detail. Note this detail or this video is meant for educational purposes only. You should consult a financial professional before you make any real changes to your accounting. So what are service items for? Well, they're used on a lot of QuickBooks reports for job costing. They allow you to break down a job or break down your company by further levels of detail to truly see where you're making money and where you're not. It'll give you much more detail than just a company P&L. It will help you standardize your job costing when you use service items. Now you can do this by thinking of service items as product and materials, as many landscape companies have started to do. But the problem with that is it usually ends up that you have like a thousand service items, all, kind, all kinds of duplicates, and really no accurate tracking of revenue or cost by those service items. Because if you think about it, you're rarely, or at least most companies, rarely break down their invoices to clients by every single material installed. Usually you roll it up and you give them a simple invoice. So unlike a retail company where it's really clear how many products we bought and how many products we sold, and you give the customer an itemized invoice, like at a grocery store, of all the products they bought, they're all associated with SKU numbers, we don't really do that in landscaping. So the the normal way you might think to set up service items is kind of broken when, it, when we come to our uh, industry. Instead, you should think about service items as services or as departments. We could get it right down to services, but that's often too much detail, as you'll see in a minute. So typically, we recommend setting up service items as departments or types of work that you can analyze how profitable they are. Let's dive into that in more detail. So what are they for? Well, in a normal company, or in a traditional company, people enter invoices, timesheets, and vendor bills directly to the chart of accounts. But when you do this, you skip service items, which are one of the better reporting features of QuickBooks. So what service items do is they actually sit in between the transaction and the chart of accounts. So instead of applying an invoice or a timesheet directly to a chart of account, I actually pick a service item. And that service item can segment it and the service item will link to a chart of account that we want it to go into. So here's a really simple example. Let's say, for example, you have a chart of accounts and it was just sales. Well, I can create a service item for installation and another service item for maintenance and another service item for snow. And then each time I make an invoice for a client, I can choose the service item called installation or snow or maintenance. Now they all link back to the same chart of account called sales. So my chart of accounts is very simple but I can still pull reports on how much I invoiced in snow or install or maintenance by running my service item reports. So it keeps your chart of accounts nice, clean, and simple, but still gives me the detail that I need for job costing reporting. And we'll get to that in a little more detail. That was an extremely simple example, but uh, it does illustrate the principle of service items. Let's take a look in QuickBooks at what service items are. So we're gonna open up our QuickBooks here. Before I actually get through the service items, let's go forward for a second. Let's take a look at the report you could get out of QuickBooks or where we want to take this when they're set up correctly. So I'm going to go to reports and I'm going to go to job costing and I'm going to go to item profitability. So what that's going to do is run me a report of my profitability by service item. So what I've done here, and we'll go through this in a couple of minutes in more detail, but I've set up service items for installation work, for grounds maintenance for enhancement as well, for snow and ice, for turf care, and unbillable. Unbillable will never have revenue, but we will have costs, so we want to track that as well. Now, each one of those departments has revenue and costs, and the costs are broken down by labor, rentals, subcontractors, and materials. Now, you could choose to get more or less detailed with your breakdowns, but generally you can see here that as a company, all this stuff might just roll up into a sales account, and all my material spends might just roll up into one single material cost in my chart of accounts. But here, running this report, I break down my company by division. And here I can truly see what's my gross profit by division so I can identify what departments or what types of work where we're making money and what types of work aren't. Or how much I'm spending on unbillable tasks and time versus my other departments. So that's the end goal. The end goal would be a report like this. And we can also run this report job level 
So I can go to job profitability detail, for example. And if I run a job in QuickBooks, it too will break down every job by those departments or by my service items. So again, I can break down a job, not just by how much did the job maker win, but how much did each part of that job maker win? I don't want to make it too complicated because again, most of your time tracking comes from your crews and the more complicated it is, the less likely it's going to be accurate. But nice and simple allows us to zone in on the things that are making us money. So now how do we set this up? Well, I'm going to go to lists and I'm going to go to item list. And note that at the end of the video, we'll include a link to a sample list of chart of accounts or service items that you can use in your company as, as a sample. Here's how I've set up mine. I've started with top level service items and they're the items that are not indented. So here I've got 100 install, 200 grounds maintenance, 210 enhancements, 300 snow and ice, etc. We like to start these with numbers because when you're entering transactions, it's easy to type a number that'll jump right to the correct uh, service item rather than alphabetical. I can also put them in the order I want with numbers as well. The top level service item, and it could be any one of these, but I'll open the top one just to break it down for you. I'm gonna look at the top level, the unindented item. It's a service item with a name and a number. It's not a sub item, that's why it's not indented. Now service items link to a chart of account, and you do that down here. So I can choose here the chart of account that I want to link the service item to. For my top level, my non-indented items, I'm gonna link those to the revenue account that I want the revenue for install to end up with in my chart of accounts. It could just be sales. In this case, I actually have an income account called installation sales, so we're gonna put it in there, but it could have just been sales and I'll still be able to see how much I invoiced in install because I'm gonna run the report on the service item rather than my whole chart of accounts. And that's it, very simple to set up. If I go into a, a sub item, like for example, materials or subcontractors or rentals, I'm gonna open up the materials one. I've got a name and a number. This time it is a sub item. That's what makes it indented there. So it's gonna be part of the installation department, but a sub item of it. So I've clicked off sub item. I've picked my installation top level item as its parent. And then same thing down here. I just need to pick a chart of account. So if we're talking about installation materials, where do you want your installation material costs to go to in your chart of accounts? And here I've got an account called material costs. It's a cost to get sold. Perfect. That's where I want it to go to. And I'm going to do the same thing for subcontractors. Name of subcontractors. It's a sub item. What account? Well, my subcontractors account. So it allows me to make a cost of goods sold subcontractors account in my chart of accounts. And I can just leave it at that. I don't have to break it down by division. But my service items here will allow me to break down by division because I've created a service item for all my different subcontractors or all my different materials. So again, my chart of accounts is simple, but my service items allow me to break it down by uh, department or division. Now, I also created one for unbillable. An unbillable will never have, for example, a, uh, a revenue. We're not gonna send any invoices to unbillable. That's why it's unbillable, but it's a great idea to have it. And it's a great idea to point it to the account you want it to go to because that way we can track exactly how much we're spending on an unbillable time or unbillable materials. Now, unbillable materials, I'm gonna typically link it to an overhead account because if it's unbillable, that it means it's non-estimated. And the only way we're gonna recover non-estimated materials is if it's part of our overhead recovery. So that's how I've got that set up there. As far as uh, payroll goes, I'm jumping ahead a little bit because it'll be explained a little bit better when we get to the payroll code. But you'll notice here, I don't really have one for labor. And the reason being is that you can apply labor to actually any one of these. I always use the top one because the two most important things for any department are what we're earning in revenue and what we're spending on labor. That's where we're making or breaking money right there. So I want to carefully manage that together. So I can actually apply the revenue or my invoices for my install department to install. I can also apply my timesheets to that very same cost code. And what it'll look like when we run that report again is this here on that, on that master line, 100.0 install, the cost is my cost of labor and the revenue are all the invoices I've made off it. You don't have to make a labor item. If you book your labor cost or your timesheet cost to this cost code, the, co the payroll item, which we'll describe later in a video, will dictate what account it goes to. So it'll automatically be accumulated here. 
And that's a, a reasonable way of setting up your service items. I've set up each department as a top level service item. Each one has sub items to allow me to track materials, subs, rentals, and any other thing I want to track separately. You can have more or less detail than we have. And each one of those links to a chart of account over here. Now, when I'm entering a transaction, for example, a vendor bill, I simply go enter bills. I'll pick a vendor here. And instead of using this expenses section, I'm going to go to items. And I'm going to pick, for example, if it was an install, I would just type 100. That's going to jump me right to my install department. And then I'm going to pick whether this bill is for a material, a sub, a rental, or other. In this case, I'll put materials. It could be you know, pavers or gravel or whatever. We'll say there's 32 or 23 at a cost of $26. Go through and fill out the rest of the job it's at. And then when I hit save and close here, it'll not only book this invoice to this customer, but it'll also allocate this invoice to this service item. And it'll go to the correct chart of account because my install materials service item is linked to the chart of account I want it to go to. So don't forget up here with our install materials, we've linked that to this chart of account. So that vendor invoice will get allocated to their correct chart of, chart of account and it'll get broken down by department because I picked the install service item. Same thing with timesheets. When we're entering timesheets, we're gonna use service items to book that to the correct department. And same thing with invoices. When we make customer invoices, again, we'll pick the service item, not the chart of account, so that all our revenue and costs flow through these service items first and allow us to break it down. One very important principle when you're going to set up service items is to keep it simple. The more service items you have, the more the crews are gonna to have to break down their time and the more the bookkeepers are gonna to have to enter everything just that bit much more accurately. Keep it simple. Everybody would like to have exact data and statistics on all their landscape company, but the reality is we're limited in what we can get back from the field and bookkeeping's limited. We don't really know the jobs that are going on. They're looking at pieces of paper and they don't truly understand where that material got spent on the job. So keep your service items simple. You may have less information than you want, but at least the information will be accurate. Where information goes wrong is where you try to break it too far down, and then you get less accurate information, and then nobody trusts the information. So you don't trust reports, you don't use them. That's the story of most people's QuickBooks. They can't trust or use the information coming out of it because it didn't get entered correctly, or it's not set up to be entered correctly. So start simple. It's always easier three, six months down the road to add a little bit more complexity than it is to try to scale it back. And we've got a sample list of service items for you, including the accounts they link to. You can find that at golmn.com help and do a search for sample service items. Now, again, that's just meant to be a sample as an example of how you could set it up, but use it to help guide you. And if you have any questions, make sure to hit us up on live chat or go to golmn.com help for all the videos relating to accounting setup or email us at advice at golmn.com.